Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Welcome to Torcan. Mm -hmm. Pleasure to be here. Uh, How many uh, clinics are you doing today? I got two today. I got one at 10 and one at 2. And then so. back at Hornet Hobbies tomorrow. Yeah, back at Hornet tomorrow, doing a bunch more. So Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah, keep me busy. <laughs> yeah, and the flight was great from Portland and everything. Yeah, and no problems. Easy. Fantastic. Times. All right, well, once again, welcome. Thank you, Dave. Okay, thank you.
Some oranges for, for lighter rust and for some of those tints. Um, some greens for the, for, the, for the military stuff and then some whites and tans and beiges for the earth tones. And the reason I do that is because each project will have a range of tones that I use on this. And then some of the models, for example, like the, like the green version here, it'll need some greens in there. A tan tank will need some other beiges. So your palette should follow along with whatever project you're really working on. That's kind of generally how I choose my colors. I don't really it's hyper critical about uh, you know specific colors unless I'm doing like a you know a very specific like an orange or something where I need three or four shades of orange and I'll add three or four shades of orange to it so I can use certain things but typically uh, you set up your palette I try to set up everything in kind of a, a simple order for me so I kind of know where everything is when I do this a lot or it's repetitive I don't like just throw the colors down randomly I kind of have an order so and then this has to sit for about 15 20 30 minutes so we'll do some hairspray We'll do some other stuff first and, and, and talk about using the oils to weather. And you're going to find, too, um, this setup that, I, that I've decided to kind of go with. Um, it's a much simpler process of painting and weathering. Um, some of the new books that have done the SM2 and, and SM1 um, talk about this quite a bit. I use basically, what, the way I've kind of, to put it in layman's terms, what I do is I do an acrylic base coat. Um, whatever the paint job is going to be. So it's going to be either armor, aircraft, robots, civilian, whatever it's going to be. Um, an acrylic base coat. I've, I've switched to Mission Models Paints. It's a new American brand that was kind of involved in the development. Uh, I do the graphic design for it, so the labels probably look, and the brochures look like my, my graphic design work at the tank art stuff. Um, but they're a pure acrylic system. They're a urethane-based paint, so versus a latex or a vinyl acrylic. So it's a different type of acrylic. It's a much higher-end product. So the quality of the spraying is pretty much like what we're used to with Tamiya and lacquer thinners. So this whole conversation when we spray Tamiya's and we thin it with lacquer thinner or we, we thin paints with Gunzi leveling thinner, which is kind of a new kind of concept for painting paint, these sprayed equally the same, but without all the harsh chemicals. Because I'm done working with, and, and this is going to be a new thing for you guys that have read my books, you're used to this, I'm pretty much done spraying lacquers. I'm over that. I'm, I'm not going to kill myself over this anymore. Um, and the same thing with the enamel world. Um, all the enamel products, I've kind of stepped aside. Uh, every time you open those bottles, I get a headache. You know, I'm tired of the models stinking the way they do. I'm tired of all working with those. They're really hard to work with. So the oil paints to me and, and the thinner uh, is in, in the new and the odorless thinners that I use. Um, it's a really nice process. It's really easy to use. It's really fun to use. Uh, and once you see how I kind of do this stuff, um, you'll understand that I think ultimately it's a lot more powerful tool uh, for you guys to do your own model building with. And that's kind of what I want to show you guys today a little bit and we'll talk about. We'll talk about some of the more traditional methods and we'll show you kind of how I've kind of switched over and, and changed over into a, a newer type of, of kind of weathering. I, I think that's kind of something that I've really embraced and, and ultimately I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. One of the things that's happened to me um, in that conversation is when we, when we read all these magazine articles and you see all this step by step by step, you see the, the, the pin washes, the filters, the decals, it's everything's one big step on the model all the way through. And so what happens with that is, is when you do stuff all the way through one time, like all the pin washes all the way through, and then you move the filters and you do that kind of stuff, and then you move to another layer of stuff and you do it all over the model, so it's one step, and then we've been taught this for a while now, so we've been watching this. What happens with that, or what I found with that, especially when you do it a lot, it gets boring, it gets repetitive, and you kind of don't get a sense of what the model's really going to do until you're really, really far along. So if you work on a model for months and months and months, it takes you a while to get to a point where you're even really like, oh, this is going to be really cool, or this is, this is turning out the way I'd hoped for, et cetera, et cetera. So what I've kind of switched into doing was, and this is kind of a very new thing for a lot of people here, and you're going to kind of 
listen to it at first and, and watch what I do and kind of grasp the concept. Basically what I'm doing is I'm moving from a, from a basic acrylic paint job, no varnishes, no nothing. Just nothing, I don't, I just don't do it anymore. Move right into the oil paints and I weather up a section 100%. So it's a very different way to look at it. If you think about that for a second. So I, what I've done is basically I have a, a painted model chipped with the hairspray, all ready to go, move into the oil paints, and I will do this entire section all the way through, 90 to 100%. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because now I can see what's gonna happen. So if I go from zero to 100 in this little section right here, I can get the story of that back end of this, or whatever I'm gonna do, whatever section it is gonna be. And um, in this one here yesterday, I basically weathered up this little fuel cap handle right here, and I went all the way through that I wanted to do it on. And so what I was able to get now is kind of my roadmap for the entire model. And what this does is this changes your mental focus because what I was saying before is, say I do a pin wash on this and I, and I move away and then come back a couple days later, even a couple weeks later, whatever, and then I do something else. It's kind of, there's no real enthusiasm for it. Your motivation, your, your mental capacity to kind of work on this model, to create the story, to create the finished product so that once on the table, it sings, it pops. It's people are like, wow, what would you, you do? You know, that kind of stuff. And when you bring it to the club and all that stuff that you guys love to do. So by doing it this way, where I switched it up, where I basically, I weather this, this section out here where I'm really happy with it. One, I think it's awesome. I feel good about it. I, I feel like a sense of accomplishment, so to speak. So I get kind of like, I can see this. I'm like, all right, this is, gonna be, this is gonna be cool. Now what I also got though, is I have a roadmap here. So when I look at this and I move forward or I move to another section, I, have, I, I can balance myself quite easily. Um, the other side of this thing is I can also, I can also articulate certain details in here with a much finer amount of control. When we do a... That's Chris. Oh, yeah, I took him to bitch this time. Down this thing. Without the train. He's doing a test. You've got to go for it now. Yeah, because they had that trainer plus the line detector on top of the trainer. So now he's been a sniff. He's been back for the two seconds. Yeah, I thought that was good. Yeah. 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 Well, I've got, I've got this new nut to do nuts here, I've got this new nuts to do nuts, we've got a big get together the on top, so apparently we're going to get this after this. Yeah, that's what I've heard, yeah. You like that one, Robert? That's mine. That's a dunkle club, just a mixture of the various to me ones and the washes and stuff. Yeah, I mix it together, lighten them up. Put some white with it? Yeah. Yeah, because it always darkens out, eh? Yeah, and then you use washes and stuff. And then yeah. I've used the full tracks on it as well. Yeah, well, that makes a big difference. And I added the no-tech light and added the, 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 uh, the jack, which just doesn't come with the kit. Oh, okay, yeah. That's a nice looking stuff. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah.
Once again, the judges meeting will be happening at about five minutes at eleven thirty. Anybody who's going to be doing any judging today, we ask you to come on over to the end of any judging for Thank you. Okay, so good afternoon everyone and welcome to uh, Torcan, the Torcan show. I'm with uh, Tony Whittingham, who's one of our members. How long have you been a member, Tony? Oh, about five years now, I think. Five years? Yeah, I never, I haven't checked. But I've been it's about there. five years, yeah. okay. And you belong to Peel Scale Models, of course. Yeah, now, right. Tony brought part of his collection here. We like to have an exhibit that talks about what we do at Peel Scales. So you want to give us a brief history of what's on the table here, Tony? Well, what we have here is, first of all, in the front row, we have a progression of Avro-built machines. So we have a Lancaster, an Avro-Lincoln in Canadian markings, and an Avro-Shackleton, which is the last piston engine bomber that Avro ever built. Se in the second row, we have a not very well-known Royal Navy carrier-borne fighter, the Sea Vixen, with the wings folded, which is a bit of a trial. It's an airfix kit, and very nice to build, actually. We have a pink airfix 124th Spitfire. It actually was pink, believe it or not. Right here, we have two Warhammer 40K pieces that I printed for my son when he was doing Warhammer at 11 years old. And finally, last but not least, in the background, HMS Graf, which is a captured U-boat. All of these are parts of my collection, and they pretty much demonstrate what Peel Scale Modelers does, and what people like 
gates do on a regular basis. So how long have you been building things? Since I was 10 years old. So that was about 30, 40 years ago? More than that. <laughs> Very good. But the fact is that a lot of this shows my level of expertise has improved since I've been with field scale models. Really? Yes. And what explains that? The quality of the finish and the quality of the build. And there's, you can see that some of this is a little bit rough, but the ones that I have worked on since I've been there have actually improved considerably. Mm. So you've learned a lot from your fellow modelers at Peel. Uh, that's correct. Mm. In fact, I would say a lot of their guidance has helped me do mm. things like the submarine. Yeah, that's one of the big benefits of belonging to a club, I think. It's the, yeah. the interaction or the cross-pollination that takes place between the different models. Now, of everything that we see on the table, Tony, which, one's, which one was the biggest challenge for you? Well, I'll have to say the Sea Vixen was the biggest challenge. Point us. Which one is the Sea Vixen? This, this one would be the Sea Vixen. Okay. And the reason is the Sea Vixen has 200 pieces. Oh. And you need three hands to make the wings fall. And secondly... So who's the third hand? Who did you use? Uh, I don't honestly remember, but I think it was my wife. Oh, good, good. <laughs> the other thing about it is 200 pieces right? 385 separate decades. Wow, that's amazing. Great. Which uh, is quite a task. Right. Well, Tony, we thank you very much for your time, buddy, and yeah, we thank you. continued success with your yes. modeling and endeavors, okay? And, and, and uh, great big uh, shout out to the scale modelers, it's 40 years. 40 years, yeah, we've been around for 40 years. That's it. So that shows you that you might go with them.
change in there.
Oh yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm moving on. You guys take your time. Some of them are very, very well painted. Like some of them are exceptionally well painted. So you kind of have to separate the. Sometimes when you look at this, you think it, it really is a person put paint at all. Oh, yeah. Some of them are good. Yeah, absolutely. Are you judging already? I am. We're going to close the room after this. No, I'm just doing that.
Czy w Flickr można zrobić galerię, która będzie osobna? Yeah, it was a stream. It was a stream. Yeah, 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 it